at the rodeo. Yes. Is that on? Oh, can you hear me? That's not usually a problem. When you think of leadership and life lessons, you don't, thoughts don't normally go to where I'm from, but I think you'd be surprised. Where I'm from is the boonies. <laughs> Webster defines the boonies as a location so far outside of the city limits, even animals question your presence. <laughs> and I've lived there most of my life. Louisiana, Mississippi, Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, it did not matter. My parents, nomadic Southern Baptists that they were, always seemed to find the boonies in every state. <laughs> but for the purposes of this presentation, the boonies were in Texas. <laughs> to give you a little insight into me, you first have to understand my father. He's a man's man. He played football in high school. He was a paratrooper of the Army. He was always kind of all the time. I refer to my childhood as my military service. In the summer, before the seventh grade, it was a bleak, hot Texas day, as every day in Texas is. <laughs> and my father said, get in the truck, boy, we're going to town. Town? We never got to go to town. Town was Bogota, Texas, population 491. <laughs> and we lived seven miles northeast. But town was where the things were. That's where the stuff was. You could get a root beer float in town. You could get tater tots in town. <laughs> I said, sign me up, I got in the truck. <laughs> but we didn't stop in town, we kept going through town out to the high school, and that's where I was introduced to football and two-a-days, which is a vicious, heinous practice, twice a day football practice. What kind of crazed fool came up with that? <laughs> in Texas, but I participated in it. You can imagine how joyful I was. My father said, go on out there, boy. I said, I ain't going out there. <laughs> no. Well, actually, I said that in my head. What I really said was, yes, sir. <laughs> because if you do as you're told, you'll survive. <laughs> my father didn't actually threaten to shoot me in the face, but it was implied. <laughs> I walked up to the crowd, and the coaches were dividing us into groups. They said, you go over there. I said, why? They said, you're a lineman. What's a lineman? You're going to protect the quarterback. Well, who's this quarterback? Why do I want to protect him? They said, just get over there. I said, why me? They said, because you're fat. <laughs> because girth substitutes for talent in junior high football. <laughs> However, I discovered it is possible to actually play football without any physical contact whatsoever. <laughs> there was a whole lot of down, set, oh, get him. Because <laughs> I wasn't about to get hurt. I live for special teams, kickoff return, punt return, because you can run here, you can run there, and not touch a soul and get told, good hustle, Thompson, looking good. And I'm thinking, you don't know from hustle, I'm trying to survive out here. <laughs> I played for two years, and I decided I'd had enough. So I told my daddy, I'm not playing football no more. He said, yeah, you are. I said, no. He said, yeah, you're playing. So I did what any red-blooded American man would do. I went crying to my mom, and mom, please. <laughs> Let me quit football. He, she said, Dad, leave him alone. Let him be. And I overheard my daddy say, what's wrong with that boy, Mama? And she said, just leave him alone. He's trying to find himself. And he said, well, he better hurry up because he's about to piss me off. <laughs> so I tried new activities because there are very few injuries reported in marching bands and honor societies. <laughs> I tried new music. I even tried new clothes. I went through an unfortunate period where I wanted to be a Madonna backup dancer with black clothes and hair down to here and five watches. If you remember the 80s, <laughs> you remember me. But I was still where I was from, so I had to go to activities such as the 4-H stock show and the rodeo. Unfortunately, it was during my preppy phase because finding yourself sometimes, but ne sometimes does, but never should, in with somebody wearing pinlovers to the rodeo. All it did was irritate my daddy and piss off Merle Haggard. So I stand before you as what I call redneck light. I'm still from where I'm from, but I'm educated and I'm embarrassingly ambitious. I'm an LVA. My relatives call me uppity, but I've remained true to myself because success comes in many shapes and sizes, and sometimes it comes with color-coordinated socks. And that's what I've learned from where I'm from.